Hallelujah. Luke chapter 7. Luke chapter 7 from 36. Luke chapter 7. Are you there? Luke chapter 7 from verse 36. Down was the Bible said, Then one of the Pharisees asked him to eat with him. And he went to the Pharisee's house and sat down to eat. And behold, the woman in the city who was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at table in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flax of fragrant oil and stood at his feet behind him, weeping. And she began to wash his feet with her tears and wipe them with the hair, the hair of her head, and kissed his feet and anointed them with the fragrant oil. Now the Pharisees who had invited him, when he saw this, he spoke to himself saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would know who and what manner of woman this is who was touching him, for she is a sinner. And Jesus answered and said to him, Simon, I have something to say to you. So he said, teacher, say it. There, there was a certain creditor who had two debtors. One owed 500 denarii and the other 50. And when they had nothing with which to pay, he freely forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which one of will love him more? And Simon answered and said, I suppose the one whom he forgave more. And he said to him, you have rightly judged. Then he turned to the woman and said, do you see this woman? I entered your house. You gave me no water for my feet. You wash, she has washed my feet with her tears and wiped them with the hair of her head. And she get, you gave me no kiss, but this woman has not cease to kiss my feet since the time I came in. You did not anoint my head with oil, but this woman has anointed my feet with oil. Therefore, I say to you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loves much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loves little. Here ends the reading of his holy word. We are still talking about what it means to love God. Hallelujah. We are still talking about what it means to love God. And this little story is a, something, a story that happened. The Bible says that one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to have dinner with him. And when Jesus came to have dinner, there was this woman who was a, a sinner. And the Bible says that when she knew that Jesus was coming to that particular house, the Pharisee's house, she brought an alabaster box. In case you're wondering what the alabaster box is, it's one of the most expensive perfume. In fact, Bible commentators say that it is a whole year's wage. So if the average wage is 30,000, 40,000 pounds, it means the alabaster box of oil costs 30 or 40,000 pounds. And the Bible says that she brought this alabaster box and broke it. You see, the box contained the oil. And the box was such that once it's broken, you can't preserve the oil. I, I don't know whether you can see. You can see like, just like coconut. Have you seen coconut? When coconut has oil, uh, juice in it, once you break it, that's it. You can't, put, you can't retain the water. The water is gone. Or the water comes out and that's it. And so the Bible says, this woman wiped Jesus' feet, wet the feet with the, with the tears and washed, wiped it with the hair. I don't know whether there's any woman who's, who has long hair here who will come out for us to demonstrate. <laughs> but you see, the glory of, of a woman is her hair. Am I, am I making sense? And so for the woman to use her glory to wipe the feet the dirty feet of Jesus, it shows something. And Jesus said that the one to whom much is forgiven loves much. Hallelujah. You see, you cannot tell me that you love and not show the love. You cannot say to somebody that I love you, but you are, you are not, there is nothing that is, is displaying the love. 
We all say we love God. But how many of us can really, really convince somebody sitting by you that you love God by your actions? Somebody came to Jesus and said, Jesus, what is the greatest commandment? In Matthew 22, this uh, expert at the law, we've been reading up, uh, it, Matthew 22, 35. He says that one of them, an expert in the law, tried to trap him with this question. Teacher, which is the most important commandment in the law of Moses? And Jesus replied, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And the f- this is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is equally important, to love your neighbor as yourself. The entire law and all the demands of the law- prophets are based on these two commandments. Hallelujah. He says that you must love the Lord with all your heart, with all your might, with all your soul. Love him passionately. Love him with everything you have. You must love God with all that you have. How can you say you love God and not show it? How can we say we love God and there is nothing to show that we love God? Our behavior is very placid and very unmoving. So we started looking at a few things that will show that we really love God. And I said to you, the first thing that will show and express your love to God is your obedience. Hallelujah. Our first thing is not our sacrifice. Our first thing is not our uh, giving or anything, but our obedience. In, in 1 Samuel 15, I think from 22 downwards, uh, um, the prophet Samuel said something. God said something to the prophet Samuel. Uh, no, Samuel said to Saul, to obey is better than, go to 21, He says, this is Saul. He says, that, but I obeyed the, the Lord. Saul insisted. I have, I have carried out the, the commission he gave me. I have brought back Kenagag to destroy. And then Saul, uh, someone asked, what is the beating that I hear? 22. Then someone said, what is this? What is more pleasing to God? Burnt offerings or sacrifice? Give me the New King James, not NLT. Has God got great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifice? As in obeying the voice of the Lord. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. And to heed or to listen than the fat of rams. Hallelujah. Obedience is better than anything. If we say we love God and we cannot obey his commandment, then we really don't love him. How many would obey the, the girl or the boy you love if they say they are coming to your house or they want to take you out? You, you will dress and wait. Oh, nobody. Give me a wave. If they say, I'm coming at 4 o'clock, would you go out to the gym at, at 3.30 and come back at 5 when he says he's coming at 4? Why not? Yeah, yeah, it's like when he says he's coming, like this uh, Valentine season, he says, I'm, I'm, I'm taking you out for a meal, and I'm coming at uh, 6 p.m., or I'm coming at 7 to take you. And then at 6, 6.30, your girlfriend calls you that, oh, can you meet me at the uh, uh, Brigade? I, I, I want to go and do some window shopping. Then you just go. What kind of girl are you? What kind of <laughs> relationship is that? No, you obey. You say, no, I can't go with your girlfriend because I have a date. How many would say that? Yeah, because I have a date. There's somebody who is more important, who is more important than you, who is coming to take me out, so I cannot go with you. Hallelujah. Yeah, because your love equals your obedience. If you love, you obey. Don't tell me that you love, but you don't obey. You can't convince the guy that you love him when he says, I'm taking you out and you are not there. I'm coming to your home, then you just leave. That means you don't like him. If you are are trying to break up with somebody and the person says, I'm coming at 3 o'clock, you leave the house, isn't it? (laughs) 
How many know what I'm saying? You anything to avoid meeting him, you will go. Because you don't want, you know, if the, the, the person knows your, 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 the places you frequent and they are going there, you know that they will come to the pub when you are in the pub. You won't be, you won't be there. You will go somewhere else. Because you don't want to meet them. Hallelujah. So how can we say we love God and not obey what he says? I pray that we would really become people that obey God. The second thing we talked about was what? To do what? To put God first. Hallelujah. How many will put somebody you love first in your priorities? In your thinking? In, in Matthew 6, 33, the Bible says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. And all, let's start from 31. Let's start from 31. It says, that, therefore, do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For all, the, for after all these, the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly father knows that you have need of these things. But you seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added to you. Hallelujah. Your first priority is God. Must be God. Your first priority is the love that you have. Amen. If you, if you, have, if you become a mother or a father, a child, you have a baby, your priority will be the child. Even when you are feeling sleepy and the baby is awake, you will not sleep. Unless you are a very, very bad parent. There's no way you will sleep. Even if you haven't slept three days and the child is awake, you will stay up because your priority is not you, it's not your comfort, but it's the child. Why? It's because your love is to the child. Am I making sense? In the same way, if you say you love God, then you must put him first. It's amazing how we don't prioritize God in, in everything we do. Hallelujah. It's like it, it, God doesn't feature in our thoughts at all. It doesn't feature. When we wake up in the morning, there's no God. In the afternoon, there's no God. In the evening, there's no God. We don't think about it. In fact, throughout the week, we haven't thought about God. It's only when Sunday, when somebody calls you and forces you before you think that, oh, it's, maybe I have to go to church. Touch your neighbor and ask him, Is that, are you the one he's talking about? What, what did they say? Ask them guilty or not guilty. <laughs> what did they say? Sometimes. You, know, you, you should never get to the place where you have to be forced to put God into your program. I say you should never be in a place where God has to be imposed on you. No. <clears throat> that is a wrong thing. I say that is very wrong. He must be in your thoughts. If that, that, that foolish boy, that foolish boy occupies all your mind, you go to bed thinking about him. You wake up thinking about him. Even when you are eating, you are thinking about him. And, 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 and he, he doesn't even call you all the time. He, even You have to beg and force him to call you. And he doesn't even want to call you. He has so many girls. You know he has about three, four girlfriends. And you are still dreaming about him all the time. I mean, this, this boy. You know, you know that the boy is not correct. How many, how many ladies, Santa, you know the boy is not correct? You know that he's not correct, but you are still uh, thinking about him all the time. Hoping that he will forget about him. Kill them, Lord. Kill all the competitors. Kill all the other girls. Let his mind only be to me. And you find a, a, another girl. Say, agree with me. Let's pray that this boy will leave all the other girls and pay attention only to me. Yeah, you can't. Just, sometimes you say, the, the boy says, oh, um, sends you a text. I don't think this relationship is going 
anywhere. I think we should just uh, pause it for now. They put your love on pause. And, and, and immediately, immediately they put your love on pause. You can't eat. You can't sleep. You, 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 you become depressed because of a, a, a three-line a three line text message. <clears throat> a three-line text message. I think you ha- we have to put our relationship on pause. Then, then you can't sleep. Then you'll be depressed. When your girlfriend calls you, you're crying. Anybody calls you, you're crying. No, no, no. He said, he said, I don't want to go to lectures. I don't want to do anything. I just want to be by myself. I don't... I need my space. And you're crying. And you're, the boy's picture is, is on your phone. And then you're crying looking at the boy. And, and the boy is even not handsome. <laughs> but your mind is on him. Sometimes you know that this boy is not, even the relationship is there's nothing to write home about. But because you don't want to be single, the fact that you'll be a single lady, it worries you so much that you are crying. Ah. Oh, the, you see, one of my greatest regrets is that our book, Before You Jump, didn't meet this. I was hoping that it would come before. But the book is already is ready, so it's going to be published very soon. Yeah. Some of these things are in there. <laughs> Hallelujah. You're thinking about somebody who doesn't think about you. When you call a person, you say, hello, you say, who is this? It's like, oh, uh, uh, it's me, it's me, Jimmy, Jimmy, it's me. Uh, it's me, it's me, Cynthia. Uh, Cynthia. Ooh. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 I'm busy, I'm busy. Meanwhile, you have pasted his pictures everywhere in your room. And you put a hat on his picture. <laughs> You put the hat. Meanwhile, Jimmy doesn't have you anywhere near his phone. There is no picture of yours anywhere. Uh, <laughs> some people want to spoil my message. <laughs> he, 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 you see, he, Jimmy doesn't put you first. You are about the fourth or the fifth choice. You are not even in the top three. You are not in the top three. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> you are not. <laughs> you, you, you don't qualify. You think you are qualified. You, have, you don't qualify. In the same way, we also break God's heart. When he thinks so much about us. He loves us so much. And we don't put him in top three. We don't put him anywhere near. But when he calls, he says, hello, who is this? He's like, you, you can't even recognize God's voice. And they, oh, it's me, it's me, it's me, it's me, it's me. You're God, you're God, it's me, God. I say, God who? You see how it, it breaks your heart when you are calling the boy and the boy says, who are you? So you mean you don't have, even have my number. And God is saying that, so you don't even know my voice. In John 10, says that my sheep hear my, they know my voice. They know my voice. They hear my voice because I'm their God. They know me. But you don't know him. You don't have any relationship with him. He loves you so much. He died for you. That boy never died for you. He won't even spend anything on you. Uh, but but, but, but you, you, you are crying. For him. Uh, 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 you, can you see the comparison? Yeah. yeah. Because it's very, it's very true. We don't think about God. We don't think about him. Can you see that boy who never thinks about you? But when he's in trouble, you are, he calls you. Yeah. When he wants to say, oh, yeah. hi. Hi, Cynthia. How are you? Um, can you transfer some 20 pounds? Uh, I'm in the shop. My... Uh, the, the, my card is not working by the tail. Just, you, I'll talk to you later. I just transfer it now. Now, now, time. Then you transfer it. 
As soon as you finish, that's it. So about five minutes later, you want to call to have you, did you receive it? it that you call, it doesn't pick. God just gave you a miracle. You could you have died when you're crossing the road and you're in law looking. You should have been killed. But he just gave you 20 pounds right there. And then you cross. And then he's calling to say, oh, did you receive the miracle I just made? Then you put him, uh, do not pick. Do not disturb. It's like he's calling. It's like, do, do not disturb. Put sleeping. Are you, do you are you are you do you love God? I mean, can you imagine? I just gave you twenty pounds, and I'm even calling to see whether you got the twenty pounds. I've sent it. Uh, did you? No, no, no. He's not picking. Because all he needed was the twenty pounds, not you. Now that you've given me twenty pounds, don't talk. Till my next need, then I'll call you. Ah, hallelujah. Are you, are you understanding what I'm trying to say? Do you, well, how, how in, in the grand scheme of things, where do you place him? When you are, when you are planning, when you are, when you are thinking about important things, where do you place him? When you receive your income, you receive your student's grant and you receive your loan, where do you place him? In your, uh, Accounting, financial accounting, where do you place him? In your budgeting, where is he? Uh, I, I, I don't know whether you're seeing the picture. Because the best, the thing you love the most is the, is the first in, on your priority, isn't it? It's the first on your list. Valentine presents. You started thinking about the Valentine present about three weeks ago. How many know somebody? You, not you, but you know somebody who knows somebody who did that. Give me a wave. Give me a wave. Not you, but you know somebody. I'm buying things you can't even afford. <sighs> Giving things. You see this this guy. His all his last money is uh, twenty pounds for the month, but he's going to use the twenty pounds to take the girl out. And then he just, oh, no, I don't feel angry. You, I'll just drink water. <laughs> that, you are going to drink water for the next two weeks. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because you want to show, you, you put her first, even before your own stomach. I love you. I love you. I love you, God, today. Hey, do you really love him? Hmm. Number three. What's the third one? Nobody's minding me. Okay. <laughs> to be faithful. To be faithful. Faithfulness. If we love God, we'll be faithful. Hallelujah. You know, in Matthew 6, 24, the Bible says, No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate one, and love the other, or he would be devoted to one and despise the other. You, you cannot serve God and mammon. Money, passions, fame, status, whatever is valuable more than the Lord. Hallelujah. You cannot serve, you cannot be faithful to something you don't love. You see, God describes our relationship with him as a man and a wife, a man and a wife, isn't it? The Bible says that we are the bride of Christ. And one of the best examples of, of uh, uh, faithfulness is marriage. The, the, when you come to the altar, they'll say that I take this man to be my lawful, had wedded husband, to love and to hold in poverty and in adversity for riches and for poorer, forsaking all others, I pledge myself wholly unto, do, unto thee, till death do us part. Which means that the, the only thing that will separate us is death. I am going to remain faithful to you, even when you are sick. 
faithful to you even when I'm sick, faithful to you in adversity. That means that if you have an accident and you become paralyzed, I'll still be faithful to you. In sickness and in health, whether you are sick or whether you are in poverty and in wealth, for richer or for poorer, forsaking all others and pledging myself wholly unto you till death do us part. It's a very wild vow. It's not something that you play with. You know, it, 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 before you jump, before you jump, think about some things. The book is going to come out very soon. Before you jump, before you even say, I do, think about it. It's not, you can't say, I do, then after two, you say, I don't. <laughs> he said, I, I do after two years. He said, no, 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 I changed my mind. No, you can't change your mind. Till you die, this is it. Hallelujah. So don't rush into it. Think about a few things before you say, I do. Hallelujah. Oh, I say hallelujah. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not the legs. It's not the hips. It's not the breast. It's not the breast. Because see, the hips, the legs, and the breast will go. Ah, oh, they will go. When, when things fall down. When all things fall down. Uh, <laughs> That is when we'll, your, your, your love will be tested. <laughs> yeah, your love will be tested. I say it will be tested. The legs will be tested. Yeah. The face will be tested. You love her because she has a beautiful face. Then she has a fire accident. And half of her face is bent. What would you do? Are you going to say, hey, I didn't bargain for this one. <laughs> I did not come for this. I came for the original face. So give me back the original face or let's forget it. No, we are not forgetting anything. No. You are signing in adversity, in calamity, and in health. For better, for worse. For richer or for poor. Forsaking everybody else. My mother used to say, the beautiful ones are not yet born. Which means that, which means that as, as, as you see this girl, you say, I love and I'm marrying. It's, it's only a, a few minutes later, you see one who is more beautiful than this one. Passing by, passing by. Because the beautiful ones, they are not yet born. Which is that they, are, they have not yet come through your, vi your, your, your vision, your fishing line. But they are, they are, they are hiding. Uh, have you not seen, you have some money, you want to buy a car. And then you see this nice car, as soon as you buy the car, you are going. Then you see another car which is cheaper than your own, but it's more beautiful than your own. <laughs> how how, how you have had that experience before? You see another one that is it's, it's like it has less mileage than yours, but it's about a thousand pounds cheaper than yours. And you begin to regret that maybe I should have waited a little while. Maybe I should have waited. Maybe I should have waited. But you've already bought it. You can't abandon the car. Hallelujah. It's placing him first. Hallelujah. Placing him first in everything you do. In your money, place God first. Be faithful. Be faithful in your paying of tithe. Be faithful in your offerings. Be faithful in the attendance of church. Yeah, it, 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 it's, it's without question that every Sunday you find me in church. It's without question. Because I'm faithful to be here. If I'm not here, wherever I am in the world, I'll go to church on a Sunday. I don't have to be the one preaching before I go. I'm faithful in, in, in that. Hallelujah. Hebrews 10, 25. And not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. Don't forsake the assembling of ourselves together. 
Let it not be your manner that you are here today. The next Sunday we can't find you. It's like it's a hit and miss. It's like you have a lie in. Oh, no, Pastor, you don't understand. I have too many assignments. I'll come next week. No, 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 no. Assignment or no assignment. Be faithful. Pressure or no pressure. Be faithful. See, your faithfulness is tested when you're under pressure. I'm not, I'm not making sense. Your faithfulness, your faithfulness is tested when you have two opposing choices. That is when we can test whether you are faithful. You have a girl, and then you have another girl, side chick. If you're a faithful person, that, the, the introduction of the side chick will tell us whether you're faithful or not. Hallelujah. Or oh, you don't like what I'm saying. You, you don't like what I'm saying. Yeah. It's, if we say this is our year of unrestrained love, then it, the, the, the love should cut across everything we do. Yeah. Be faithful to God. Be faithful to God. Number, number four. Let me give you number four. If we are going to be people who love, one of the best ways to show your love is to sacrifice. 1 John 3, 16 to 18. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. If anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or a sister in need, but has no pity on them. How can they, how can the love of God be in that person? Hallelujah. He laid his life down for us because he loved us. He gave us his all. How can we say we love and shut up our heart from the one who has need? In Matthew Chapter 16, verse 24. Jesus answered to the disciples and said, Whoever comes, wants to be my disciple, must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. I always say that the emblem of, of Christ, of Christianity, is the cross. And the cross is not a fashion a, a accessory. So like you, you dress and then you put your chain with a crucifix on. And it's like you have dressed, you are going. No, no, no. It's a symbol of sacrifice. Hallelujah. I say it's a symbol of sacrifice. If you love God, it's going to have to cost you something. How many believe that when you love somebody, it costs you something? Love is very expensive. Especially in these times of, uh, um, uh, what is it called, Valentine. It's very, very expensive. See, this is the time you have to quickly break up with the guy. <laughs> or break up with a the girl. <laughs> then after Valentine, maybe like uh, in March, you can make up. <laughs> it's like, oh, uh, uh, listen, uh, let's 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 put, let's 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 break break up for a while because because Valentine is coming. <laughs> Kira used to sing a song. I don't know where Valentine is coming. Show me where is your boyfriend. <laughs> Yeah. Why? Because it's expensive. Have you heard that song before? Valentine is coming. Show me your boyfriend. As I was talking, I just remembered. He's been teaching me bad things. Yeah. Say, like, show me your boyfriend. Why? Because you have to, the boy has to do something. Isn't it? The girl has to do something, isn't it? They buy things that you can't afford. How many have bought some things you couldn't afford, but you had to buy it for somebody? Give me a wave. We are in church. Don't lie. And even with that, he left you. <laughs> it's like you have to even borrow money from somebody. How many, how many know what I'm saying? You, it's not you, but you know somebody who knows somebody. It's not you. Oh, give me a wave if you know. You had to borrow money to go and take, take, him, take her out. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you see, you can, tell, you can tell those whose love are old. 
<laughs> because when the love is old, they become very logical. But when the love is young, they are illogical. Yeah. Because when the, when, the, when, the, when the love is young and strong, it's like the heart is like you can't, you can't think straight. You have to do, you give some things you, you don't have to. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 12. Verse 1. He says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. If you say you love God and you cannot sacrifice your body, I question your love. You can't even fast for two hours. You can't pray for 20 minutes. Listen, when you love somebody, you, you, don't, you don't put time on how, you, how long you talk. You don't put time on how long you talk. I, I remember when I fell in love. When I fell in love, it will be just like this. Those times, those times, we had Motorola phone. How many know Motorola phone? The one with the fat, the fat back. Motor, some of you ain't born then. Put the Motorola phone, the big one, the one with the, 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 the battery is like this, chunky battery. And those times, the phone used to overheat when you talk for a long time. And they didn't have speaker phone. That was a long time ago. <laughs> Can you find a Motorola phone for me? And you see, it used to be so hot, my ear would be burning. Because we would have been stuck in the night from like, like 10, 12 to about 4 a.m. We are talking. Talking. And then we'll, get, we'll reach a point. We'll reach a point. I said, okay, you put the phone down. Then Jesus said, you to put the phone down. They said, okay, we are going to count to three. After three, then put the phone down. One, two, three. Three, then the, the place goes quiet. They say, are you there? You, you two, are you there? I say, but I told you to put the phone down. No, 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 but you put the phone down first. Then it's okay. No, you call, so you put the phone down. Say, then, no, 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 you two, uh, then start another conversation. <laughs> then we talk and talk and talk and talk. No, it's not this one. It's the other one. The one is like a flip phone. It's a flip one with a fat back. This one was the very first one. The, 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 the upgrade of this one is what I'm talking about. Yeah. So at the point, you used to put the charger in, in the thing. You put the charger in, and, then you keep, and when you put the charger and it's charging, it becomes hotter. So it's like you, I'll put a, like a, a handkerchief on the thing so that it doesn't bend my ear, and I'm still talking. Meanwhile, in the morning, I'm going to work. It's a sacrifice. It's a sacrifice. We talk. That's the one. Talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. Today, if you ask me what we're talking about, I don't remember. Today, if you find I'm talking to her, as I'm talking, she'll sleep. Oh. <laughs> my life. <laughs> Before it's like when I call, it's like, are you asleep? Oh no 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 no! I'm not. Are, are you sure you're asleep? No 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 no! I'm not here. I'm here. Let's talk. And we'll talk into the morning. Now I'm talking. <laughs> <laughs> ah. <laughs> yeah, you're talking. You should do it. Continue tomorrow. God forgive us. Hallelujah. Now she'll be talking. Say, talking. Oh. Do, do you hear? I heard what you said. I heard what you said. Then she said, what did you say? What did you say? Then she, I'll show you guys. Just as you're sleeping, try and remember the pointers. It's like, oh. It's 
So you sleep there. Ah, it's not about Cynthia and uh, the children. And what did I say? What did I say about the children? Say, oh, but you're talking about Cynthia and the children. I, I was here. I didn't hear anything. You just pick the, the junctions, the junctions of the conversation. The rest, you can forget it. Hallelujah. But that's what happens when you're in love. You spend time talking about nonsense, but you still talk. How can you say you love God and cannot spend even five minutes talking to him? How can we not be in conversation? Because conversation is what makes us grow into a deep relationship. It's conversation, it's talking. If you say you are in love with somebody and you don't talk to the person often, then love will die. Because somebody else will be talking to the person. And before you realize, the person's heart is turned to... This is a, a, a key for those of you whose love are far away. Don't say because of money, I won't talk to them. Mm. <laughs> I just dropped the bombshell. Even me, I can see that it's a bomb, so I've, I've come to hide. <laughs> don't, don't say that, oh, uh, it's, it's, it's ex- I can't afford it, it's expensive. Somebody's talking to him. Somebody's talking to her. As you are sitting here not talking, somebody is talking. You see, as you are not talking to God, somebody is talking to you. And before you realize, your heart has gone to that person. Um, you didn't hear what I said. Let's, let's move on quickly. The next one, to love God is to build him a sanctuary or build him a house. To love God is to build God a house. 2 Samuel chapter 7, the Bible says, verse 1, while King David was living in his house, the Lord gave him peace with all his enemies around him. So the king said to the prophet Nathan, look, I am living in a house made of cedar. While the ark of God remains in the, in the tent, Nathan told the king, do everything that is in your mind because the Lord is with you. Hallelujah. In 1 Chronicles 22, 19, the Bible says, Now set your heart and your soul to seek the Lord, your God. Therefore arise and build the sanctuary of the Lord God to bring the ark of the covenant of the Lord and the holy articles of God into the house that is to be a built, that is to be built for the name of the Lord. Amen. 1 Chronicles 22, 19. To love God is to build God a house. Hallelujah. You cannot love God and not help in the church of God. You love God, but you don't do anything in church. You love God, but you are just there. In John chapter 21 verse 15, this is a conversation, John chapter 21 verse 15 that Jesus had with Peter. So when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than this? And he said, yes, Lord. And he said, you know that I love you. And he said, if you love me, feed my lambs. If you love me, make sure there's food for my lambs to eat in that place where they live. If you love me, feed. How many will say that the, the, the choir gave us a nice, a nice meal? Yes. They fed us. Yeah. They, they, they love God, so they are feeding the lambs. He says that if, let's read on. And he said to him again a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? And he said, yes, Lord. You know that I love you. And he said, tend my sheep. If you love God, you will tend the sheep. You will visit people. You will encourage people to come to church. You will go and find people and bring them to church. You will share Christ with your friends. You will go and uh, call people after church. How are you doing? I haven't seen you. I've been praying for you. I hope everything is all right. If you love God, you will tend after his sheep. Hallelujah. Next one, verse. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? And Peter was grieved because he said to him a third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, 
you know all things. You know that I love you. And Jesus said, feed my sheep. Make sure there's food for my sheep to eat. Make sure you help to build the house of God. Become a, 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 an arch member of the builders of, the, of God's house. Hallelujah. Become somebody who joins in the building. In Luke chapter 7, the Bible talks about the centurion. He says that the man loved the nation for he has built us a synagogue. And he said that it is good that you do this good thing for him. He's worthy for you to do this good thing for him because he's beloved the Lord. He loved the nation. He has built us a synagogue. If you love God, one of the things you do is you obey. Hallelujah. In Acts, I think Acts chapter uh, 10, there about, he says, Cornelius, a man that loved the Lord, gave alms freely. He gave. He was always praying. And even though he didn't qualify, God made Peter go to his house and share Christ with him because he loved God. If you love, you will help in the building of, of God's house. Don't tell me you love when you are not helping to build God's house. Don't tell me that. Because I told you that the last time there's a difference between being selfish, lust, and love. Lust takes. Love gives. So anytime you come to the house to take all the time, you come to the church to take, you take advice, you take prayer, you take uh, uh, worship, you take uh, a word, you take uh, hugs free of charge, you take handshakes, you take blessings, and then you go away. The next time you come, you come and take music, you take prayer, you take blessings, you take the word, you take and you go away. You don't love, you lust. Because if you, if you have a mind to love, you have a mind to give. So you join a department, you join the ashes, you join the choir, you join the prayer team, you join the, the technical team, you join something and help to build the house of God. Stand to your